Welcome, Northview students, to week two of mm-hmm. our Christmas series. I'm excited to be here, and and I feel like we need to pause before we yes. really jump into the conversation and talk about our different cri- Christmas shirts slash sweaters. Uh-huh. If you don't mind, I will go first. This is something, <laughs> this is something I'm very proud of, why I brought this topic of conversation. But if you, I don't know if you can see, hopefully, but it says, you done messed up, A.A. Ron. <laughs> you done messed up, A.A. Ron! <laughs> Key and Peele video, hopefully, substitute teacher. Are you yep. familiar mm-hmm. with this video? Yes. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. And like once that video came out, everyone who's ever met me, I feel like is like, hey, A.A. Ron, nice. <laughs> but what's nice about it, they actually spell my name correctly oh. now because they're like, oh, it's A.A. Ron. There you go. Beautiful. So it's like the pros, pros and cons of being yep. famous. <laughs> Maybe not. Famous. But. So t- tell me, Alyssa, about um, this Yes. So this is uh, my 14-year-old little sister's sweater. Um, if you can't tell by based off just the fact that my arms clearly mm-hmm. don't fit in it. Um, but yeah, it doesn't fit. It's a size small, but it is the only Christmas sweater that we had in the house. So it's the one I wore. Love it. Now, be <laughs> honest. Did you steal that from a 14-year-old? I in fact did. Stealing Sorry, from Lucy. a 14-year-old. Come on. <laughs> Lucy, I'm going to get it back to you. <laughs> Sorry, Lucy. <laughs> okay. I feel bad that I'm not wearing red like everybody else's, but mm. I am a cat lover. I have cats of my own. And so my shirt says, Merry Catmas on it. And it's a uh, Christmas tree of cats. And so it just has a lot of sentimental meaning to me. I love it. You know, and the things that I value deep in my life. <laughs> Amazing. So. That that uh, makes me want to sneeze. Oh. That, 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 that Catmas tree. Great. Yes. I'm allergic to cats. And so, oh, no. yes. Don't come over to my house. Love it. All right. Well, hey, let's, let's jump into week two. Yep. Week two of our Christmas series. Uh, mm-hmm. we, you know, we've been talking about this theme of soul care. So we do- dove into last week. This week, we're kind of focusing pretty specifically on mm-hmm. that topic of anxiety. Yeah. So we'd love to hear, you know, anxiety is something, first of all, that we all experience to one degree or another. I think we all have experiences with anxiety um, and can all relate to a certain level. So I'd love to hear from you to a little bit more about, about anxiety and specifically how it relates to soul care. Yeah. So in week one, we talked about how like we are dynamic human beings. So we have a physical, a spiritual, a mental and emotional side to us. And all of those are affected by every single thing that we do. And so soul care is the spiritual side of what we do. And so when you think of anxiety, maybe you think, oh, that's mental, that's emotional, but like anxiety affects, again, every single part of who we are. And so what I think when we're anxious in our lives, it tends to overflow again into every single area. And so caring for our soul helps to soothe and quiet our anxiety because every single person experiences anxiety at some point in their life. And there's different levels of anxiety. Like we know that there is the anxiety that you feel before a test, and that's different than the anxiety that maybe somebody feels every single day when they wake up and have talked to their doctor or something about Mm -hmm. that. But we know that anxiety Mm -hmm. affects every single person and every single part of who we are. And so Mm -hmm. that's what makes it so important and so necessary to soul care. Yeah. Yeah. I think anxiety is something that is a lot more common today than I think it ever has been before, Mm -hmm. especially just like the world we live in is so fast paced. Everything's coming at us so quickly um, and we get news at us like rapid fire and it's always Mm -hmm. something more negative than the day before. Mm -hmm. And so it can feel really overwhelming. Um, So the stresses of like everyday life hit you really quickly and that causes a lot of anxiety. But on top of that, there's people who just have anxiety disorders that are Mm -hmm. diagnosed. Um, And so it's just something to like be aware of that there are some people that like that is like seeking out like professional help counseling Mm -hmm. is always a good thing and we highly encourage that and stuff so yeah absolutely i think it's a good distinction to make is that each one of us at points are going to feel anxious that's a part of life we're going to feel anxious but some people have anxiety Mm -hmm. right but i do think what's cool about the soul care conversation is regardless of where you are on Mm -hmm. that spectrum and anywhere in between is that if we invest in our relationship with god Mm -hmm. and so in so doing we are caring for our souls it is going to help with anxiety, regardless of where you're at on that spectrum. But again, I just would encourage you, if, if you are someone who struggles with anxiety, um, do not uh, shy away from that professional help. Like, seek out professional help. We can we can have that, and also Jesus can help us. It can mm-hmm. It's a both-and situation. You don't have to reject professional help in order yeah. to follow Jesus. So I think it's just a good disclaimer uh, to have. And so let's, let's jump into the Christmas story. Yeah. I would love to hear, where do you see anxiety in the Christmas story? Yeah, I think around Christmas time, we talk about all of the beautiful and grand things of the Christmas story and the birth of Jesus, which Mm -hmm. are the things that we do want to celebrate. But the reality is 
there is anxiety in the Christmas story. We talked about it last week. Like you think of Mary being a 13 or 14 year old girl that is an angel approaches her in like the middle of the night and is like, you are going to have a son, not just like any son, but this man and this guy who's going to be like the father of all nations, who's going to be the Lord of Lords. And you're like, that feels like a big weight to bear. Like I'm sure that Mary was anxious. And then Joseph finds out, finds out that his like wife is pregnant. So he's like, she's been unfaithful to me. He's trying to figure out divorce. And then again, this angel appears to him and he's like, don't divorce her. Like continue Mm -hmm. with your plans. And he's like, but this isn't my kid. You know, like there's so much anxiety in that story. And then you think again, they're on their way to Bethlehem. Like they're getting ready to have this baby. There's no place for them in the inn. So then they go out to this manger, they have this baby and then their census is called and they have to like run for their lives because they're trying to kill all like the firstborn baby boys. And they just have a baby boy. Like there's anxiety everywhere in the Christmas story all of the characters. And it's like a beautiful thing to celebrate Jesus entering the world. But like those were an anxious couple of days, couple Mm -hmm. of months, like preparing for Jesus's arrival into the Mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that. And I love that from that story, there comes songs like Mm -hmm. silent night. Yeah. (laughs) All is calm. All is bright. Because I think the reality, like you said, is there was this long list of why anxiety could have been the thing leading that story. Mm -hmm. But we also know that we serve a God of peace, yep. right? Mm-hmm. And that we can find peace in all circumstances mm-hmm. with the power and with the help of, of the Lord. And yep. so, um, I, I yeah, I just love that that we can see peace throughout that whole story based on what our what our focus is. And so mm-hmm. I'd love to talk a little bit about peace because I think peace is kind of like that is the solution to anxiety, right? Mm-hmm. When you're right in the middle of, of feeling really anxious, what you're desiring is, is honestly just like a peace in your yep. spirit. And so I would just like love to hear a little bit about more about peace and specifically so often we pray god give me peace give me peace like it's something he just snaps his fingers and then we receive it but i think that in reality peace is something we can actually pursue and go after so we'd love to hear a little bit about what does it mean to actively pursue peace yeah yeah i think again we have this idea that peace is passive because we hope that when peace enters into our lives we feel this like passive sense of like everything's okay i don't need to overthink i don't need to be anxious about anything but in reality Peace is not passive. Like peace is something that we can actively use to get rid of the anxiety, to get rid of the worry in our lives. And so I have three things that I want to share with you that I think by practicing these three things, you can actively see peace enter into your life. The first one is prayer. We know that Mary was prayerful. We know that Joseph Mm -hmm. was prayerful. We know that there is power to change our situations when we enter into prayer, but it's also a place where we can be fully open with God about the emotions Mm -hmm. in our life. The second is petition, which... Petition sounds similar to prayer, but Mm -hmm. prayer is focused on a lot of things. Petition is very specifically focused on praying for a specific person or a specific situation in our Mm -hmm. lives that we want to see anxiety relieved. And so petition being very pointed with our prayer. And then finally, just thanksgiving, that at the end of the day, we can choose to have any posture that we want, but having a posture that is thankful, having Mm -hmm. a posture that shows gratitude to God, when we focus on the things that are good in our lives, I believe that it leaves no room for the things that are causing us to have anxiety that are causing us to worry. So Mm -hmm. prayer, petition, and thanksgiving, I think, are three ways that we can usher in peace into our life. So it's not passive, but it's active. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's, yeah, I think that is so good. And, and I think especially in the midst of this Christmas season. Um, if you want to just relate it to right now to Christmas, it's like, it's all about Jesus, but let's be honest, like in American culture, it's all about all kinds of other things too. Mm-hmm. It's about the uh, family gatherings and getting presents for everyone and like doing this and that. And so often we, I think we miss the peace mm-hmm. that God is actually calling us mm-hmm. to within the Christmas season. So I love those three points. And, and I know for me, I'm like challenged to actually, actually yeah. like apply, <laughs> apply those this Christmas. Um, and so I think that's, that's so huge. And so, um, love it. Uh, Love this series. I think it's super, super important Mm -hmm. and thankful for you guys and looking forward to seeing you all week three of Soul Care this Christmas. Merry Christmas, guys. See you next week.